this video, I will explain how you can make the shadow underneath your head move instead of adding shadow on face textures. Usually, you can add shadow on face textures when there's not much movement happening. But if you love to swing your head left and right, or you make the expressions more exaggerated, but you see the shadow underneath the hair also follow the same movement, you get the idea what I'm trying to say here. Let's start making one hair strain as an example. So I choose the front right here, create new, and then edit hairstyle. Alright, zoom in, space to move. For me, I don't want the mesh with the head, so I just make it wide open like this. Alright, so what do you want? Delete again. Okay, here it guides. Put it wide, make it wider. Then pick a brush, click this free hand group again, and then glide away. Neat. Next, duplicate the one hair strand right here. Let's take the selection right here because we're not adding a hair. Go to this hair right here, scroll down, and change this cross section from diamond flat while the fluffy change to straight. Adjust the shape of this hair right here by changing the graphite here. Select the freehand group right here, go to move, and then push the mesh backward like this. Right now, these two have the same hair color textures, uh, so we can even duplicate the materials right here. This is adding the material, this is duplicate the material first right here. So we're going to duplicate it, and then we're going to go to this layer right here and go to this material right here. So if you don't want to be confused with the first material right here, we can even change the main color. So we're going to untick this one because we don't need this. And then we can even change the main color just to avoid confusion with the main color right here. So this is our hair shadow and this is our main hair. This is our shadow hair right here. Now we need to edit the textures of hair right here. Go to the second material, go to edit textures. We don't need this layer right here, can just delete it, the highlight layer. It, it textures right here. Go to the eyedrop symbol right here, to pick the color, or to even use Alt key as a shortcut for picking the color. Delete the default design layer right here because we don't need them. Adding a new layer and then change the color from light to darker to get a shadowy effect right here. Turn on the mirror and color it away. You can see the effect right here, the shadow right here. This time we're going to eye drop the skin here again and we're going to color the bottom of the hair right here. Adding a new layer and change the brush type from solid to blur reduce the brush opacity and make the brush with more bigger and then start color it away So here is our shadow hair right here and we can see the hair shape is not following the main so we can keep adjusting them So scroll down, go to the hair one right here then change it and then go to control point Okay, so now you can see the difference before and after adding additional shadow hair. We need to save our work first. Now it's time to apply the hair bone. Here, we will combine this hair mesh to one. Check this freehand group right here and then create bone group. Click this bone group right here. This is my personal preference. For short hair, I recommend two or three bones is enough to make your hair sway. For long hairs, it's either four or five bones or more than that since it depends on the hair length itself. In this case right here, we're going to reduce the bones to two. 
like this. And for this one, I think it's either at the scalp is should be good enough. And for stiffness though, I just let them in default number right here because it's just made your hair much more stiffer and less smooth. For gravity, it's just to make the hair drop down to the center. I will let this be for today or if maybe you want to make it a little bit sway right here. That is good enough. So his radius is just adding a collider so the hair won't go through your face. You can slide the value either low or even high. For me, this value right here is good enough so that the face won't be clipping right there. Alright, I think this should be good enough. So let's save our hair again and override it. Go to camera, go to poses and animations, select any animation that you want as long as you can see your hair is moving. There we go. We can see the hair is moving. The front view looks good, yes, but when you look at this side view, the illusions is a bit shorter, yeah. You can see the hair is a bit clipping here, but nothing to worry since they can only see the front anyway. And people, that is how you make the shadow look underneath your hair. Let me know in the comment what type of tutorial or viewer time lapse that you want to see and suggestion is fine too. Don't forget to check the list of viewer tutorial for those who haven't seen it and and up to Liza.